Hi, my name is Dr. Nicole Cutts of Cutts Consulting and Vision Quest Retreats, and today I'd like to give you a brief introductory lesson on the Four Agreements from the book of that same title by Don Miguel Ruiz. Now, the Four Agreements offer a very powerful code of conduct that can help you experience peace and happiness in your personal life. But I've also found that the Four Agreements are a very effective code of conduct uh, that you can live by in your working setting, in your work, in your organizations, okay, between you and your coworkers. And you'll also probably recognize, as I talk about these four agreements, um, how closely tied they are to having a high degree of emotional intelligence, which we all know is very important in terms of having a results-oriented and healthy work environment, okay? So the first thing I'm going to do is tell you what the four agreements are, and then I'm going to tell you a little bit about each of them and give you some examples of how you can use them in your work. Okay? So the first agreement is be impeccable with your word. The second one is don't take anything personally. The third agreement is don't make any assumptions. And the fourth agreement is always do your best. So let's start with the first one. So what does it mean to always be impeccable with your word? Well, obviously the first thing you think about is being honest. You know, saying what you mean and meaning what you say, sticking to your word. But there's another aspect of being impeccable with your word, which is not only meaning what you say, but not saying it mean. Okay. So it's actually the opposite. It's using the power of your words to uplift those around you. Examples of how you can be impeccable with your word in a working environment or in your organization is to use your word for uplifting people in terms of giving them compliments, um, encouragement, uh, saying thank you for a job well done. Those are all things that help to create bonds between you and your coworkers and help to make a better environment. Also improve healthy communication while reducing conflict. Okay, the second agreement is don't take anything personally. That's a really difficult one, right? I've often had people um, that I've taught this lesson to say, well, you know, what if the person is saying something to you as an insult that they want to take, they want you to take personally? Well, the point is you don't have to take it personally, even if they mean it personally. What Don Miguel Ruiz suggests is that everybody is living in their own world. They have their own dream, you know. Um, people will say it, it, it really rests with them, right? So even if somebody says something to you that is potentially insulting, don't take it personally means you don't have to take it into your heart. You don't have to let it um, determine how you feel or determine how you work or determine how you interact with people. Okay, it means putting some distance between the other opinions of others and how you feel about yourself. It's difficult, but with practice, you would come to realize how much more peace and happiness you can take. You can also easily see how not taking something personally would reduce and mitigate conflict, okay? So oftentimes we get into conflict because somebody says something, we get defensive, we take it personally, and then we strike back. You know, we're in a fighting stance and their aggression occurs. But if you don't take something personally, then you don't need to meet something that somebody else has said with aggression. So you don't have to get into conflicts with them, okay? The third agreement, don't make any assumptions doesn't literally mean don't make any assumptions. For example, if I go to sit in a chair, um, I have to assume that that chair is gonna hold me. I can't go around testing everything all day long to make sure that it's as I think it is. Don't make any assumptions, similar to don't take anything personally, means don't make any assumptions that are gonna lead to unhappiness, conflict, or strife, okay? And an example of that might be, let's say you send an email to a colleague or you pick up the phone and call them, and their tone, either via email or by phone, seems curt or short with you. Oftentimes, I've heard people that I, I work with as, as a coach, they might say, well, you know, I know so-and-so doesn't like me because they talk to me this way, or I know so-and-so didn't like my work because of something, the way they talk to them. Don't make any assumptions means don't automatically assume a scenario that's going to lead to you feeling badly, that might lead to you taking it personally, okay? Now, sometimes it's appropriate rather than making assumptions to check out what the other person is feeling or what they're saying, you know. So asking for clarification in a non-threatening, just assertive manner is sometimes important. Just asking, is everything okay? You seem a little bit different today. It doesn't mean going around the office always saying to people, are you mad at me? Because we all know that that's not an emotionally intelligent response either. Don't make any assumptions just means don't make assumptions about things that would lead to you feeling bad or would lead to conflict between you and another person. Now the fourth agreement is always do your best, okay? So this is not an excuse for perfectionism, which a lot of people suffer from. 
Always do your best means always do your best under the given circumstances of the day and the time that you're doing whatever you're doing. It also applies to the first three agreements, okay? So you're not always going to be completely impeccable with your word. You're not always going to be able to not take things personally. But what you do is you strive to do your best in the given day and under the circumstances. And an example of that that I use is your best on Monday morning at 8 o'clock might be different than your best on Thursday afternoon at 4 o'clock in the afternoon. When you're sick, when you're stressed, your best will vary. But the idea is that you strive to do what is in your control, what's your best, and then you leave the rest. People drive themselves crazy thinking they can do more than they can do, thinking they can control the reactions of others or how other people will receive things. Always do your best is also not an excuse to say, oh, well, I've done my best, that's good enough. It means really being honest and saying, given what I'm working with, given how I'm feeling, given the skill sets that I have, am I really doing my best? Okay? So I want you to think about these four agreements, and I want you to think about how, if you employed them at work, it could really make a difference in your life for you personally, but also for your organization and your coworkers. And I'm going to post some questions below this video that you can use as self-reflection questions. So I hope this has been a helpful video. Thanks.